Hi, I'm Kim, and I've developed a special way to cheat applique. I love the look of hand applique. I do not like the work and the time that's involved. So I'd like to welcome you to Inside Out Broken Quilting, and we're gonna start right off with a pattern that's gonna be available online for you. So just for the purposes of this particular quilt, we're calling this the football, and this is the eyeball. So I've gone ahead and traced that onto a piece of template plastic. I traced the football on the outside and cut that out, and then I traced the eyeball on the inside. Now I'm going to use this template on this pattern tracing material. There's a lot of different varieties available. This is the one I chose. As you can see, it's very lightweight. You can see through it. You can draw on it. There's no bias. There's no right side, no wrong side. Don't worry about it. So I have taken my template and I've traced all of my footballs onto the template, um, onto the pattern tracing material. For each block, you're gonna need two footballs. So you can figure out how many you'll need. And then I've used the center to trace all of my eyeballs on another piece of the pattern tracing material. Then I'm going to cut these out. And now don't be real fussy about how you're cutting these out. You do not, do not cut on the line, okay? You'll see why in a minute. So we're gonna cut all the way around. I just call this messy cutting. We're just cutting around the outside. We just wanna separate the pieces from one another. We don't really wanna cut them neatly. So this is about what you're gonna have. Then we're going to pin one of these onto your fabric. Um, I usually choose two different colors or if you're doing real scrappy, you'll have all different ones. For this demonstration, I'm showing it on brown. So we're gonna take a football, we're pinning them onto our brown, um, onto our brown fabric. Then we're going to cut them apart from one another. Again, there's no big um, rush to do this. Don't try to be real fancy. You know, people that like to be very precise, try to make this very neat, it doesn't matter. Okay, when we get those all cut out, it's going to look like this. Then we're going to go over to the machine and we're gonna sew from point to point and back to the first point. Don't leave any openings, don't worry about the points too much. So I'm gonna go over to the machine now. I'm going to select a straight stitch and I'm gonna shorten that stitch just a little bit. Um, I just want a shorter stitch length so that it holds it together nicely. I'm gonna put the foot down and I'm just gonna let it go. So I'm actually sewing right on the line. This is why you didn't wanna cut the line out. Some people make that mistake and then you don't have anywhere to sew. This is great for those of you that don't like that precision and all that you know, minute detail, you know how you get with piecing. And, um, but this is gonna let you sew your curves and make your pointy points beautiful without actually having to do the work for it. So I'm still just sewing right on that line that I drew all the way around. And we're gonna go right back to where we started right here at this point. Okay, I'm gonna cut the thread. I'm gonna raise the foot. I'm gonna come back over here. I'll take the pins out. And now I'm gonna use some nice sharp scissors. And this is where you have to be a little bit more careful. I'm going to cut very close to that stitch line. I'm not gonna, set, I'm not gonna cut through the stitch line. I'm just gonna cut really close. And what I'm doing now is removing the bulk from the seams. So when we turn this around, it's gonna have a nice thin seam allowance. So we're just gonna cut all the way around here. 
And you can see I'm not cutting through the line. I'm just cutting very, very close to it. Okay. Once that's cut, now we have to flip it right side out. So now, this is another one, one of the only times you have to be careful. Kind of pull it, make a hole with your nice sharp scissors, and then just make a slit. It doesn't have to be very big, just big enough to get your hands in there. Now we're going to turn it right side out. If you have a turning tool you like, this is a good time to use it. We're gonna get up into that point. We're gonna smooth it out. Get up into this point. Continue smoothing. I like the little, little um, round end for this too. Okay. Now I'm gonna come over to the iron. And from the back side, because this is so lightweight, I'm gonna pull this just a little bit over so that we can just barely expose the edge of the fabric from the front. You can use your fingernails, just give it a little, give it a little pull. And we're gonna pull that edge away so that when we applique, you're gonna have a beautiful finished edge. Okay. So, let's get the one that's finished here. Okay, so when we're all finished pressing, we're gonna have a giant football that looks about like that. We're gonna cut this in half with our rotary cutter, point to point. We're gonna do that with every single one that you've done, depending on how many blocks you've made. Then we're gonna take all of these little footballs we're gonna pin them onto the background fabric, just like this. See how they match up at the corners? We're gonna pin them on. And for each block, you wanna do each block in one color, the alternating block in another color, as you can see here, brown and pink. So let's go over to the machine again. I'm gonna change the stitch again. I'm going to be using the blind hem stitch and I'm gonna move it way over and make the stitch length very short. And I'm gonna put the foot down and start sewing. And what this is gonna do is attach each little piece of applique and you won't even be able to tell. On this particular one, I'm gonna be using a variegated thread um, it had all of the colors in my variegated fabric, so it's working out really nicely. So I'm doing the straight part of the stitch is going into the background, and when it zigs over to the right, it's just catching the little tiny edge of this fabric. Now, if you work this out right, you can go all the way down here into the corner, pivot, and go around, and you can do all four pieces without ever having to remove it from the machine. It's pretty slick. Okay. So you would just continue doing that all the way around. So this is what it looks like with the beautiful variegated thread. And we would just do that all the way around on this, on this same one. I would have continued to all four corners. Okay, once we have all four corners um, attached and they're not gonna be flopping around, we're gonna get another pair of super, super sharp scissors. And we're gonna slip those scissors right underneath the background fabric. We're gonna use this again. So we're going to cut away just behind that piece of football. We're also removing that piece of um, pattern tracing material as well. Okay, so now you can see that that's cut away. This little piece that I cut out though, we're gonna use that again. So that's where we're going to get this little part right here. 
Remember those eyeballs we made before? Here it is. I've cut it out around the line. I've also cut down the middle of that. So now we have two halves. I'm gonna take that piece I cut out. I'm gonna lay that piece of fabric, uh, pattern tracing material on top. I'm gonna go back to the machine with a very short stitch length. I'm gonna sew from here all the way around. It's gonna look like this all the way around. Then again, I'm gonna take the scissors and I'm going to trim very, very, very close to the edge. And then you can use your rotary cutter if you like. So we wanna cut that out so that what we end up with is this, okay? Then we're gonna flip it like we did before, turn it inside out. We're gonna press it like we did before. Only thing different now, we're gonna fold it in half. So it looks like this. Then we're gonna take our block, fold it in half, line that up, pin it, and then we'll use our blind hem stitch again there. So now you can see where we get our middles, where we get our footballs, and all of our beautiful fabric. If you notice on the quilt in the back, we've also used a decorative stitch. So that's my version of the very easy double wedding ring without doing the applique.